voice disorders. So if, yeah, you must be thinking why we have a rigid here. So in uh, voice disorders, we usually look at one of the more common things is vocal cord palsy. Uh, there is vocal abuse. Now vocal, what is vocal abuse? Vocal abuse is excessive yelling or shouting, which you can see even in kids and even professional voice users. So professional voice users like teachers, therapists, singers, anchors, actors, these individuals have to use their voice at a louder intensity as compared to the normal individuals. Like what I am talking right now is a softer voice. So, but when I'm with a child, when I'm in therapy, this tone will not help me. I have to increase my loudness. So, with all those things, vocal abuse happens because of which we can have vocal nodules, vocal polyps, which will affect vo voice leading to vo harsh voice quality or breathy voice quality. So that's where therapist comes into play. And we have something called as pubophonia. Now, what is pubophonia? Uh, as we know, uh, by at the age of puberty, the males change their voice. Boys change their voice and come into a very thicker, low-pitched voice. So when this transition doesn't happen smoothly and the boy who retains the female voice ends up having a female voice and hence they, it's called as pubophonia that is also worked upon so we teach the individual how to use the larynx at a lower level and ensure that we have a proper a manly voice as compared to a female voice so how does a voice therapy work the voice therapy usually starts with a voice arrest where the individual is completely asked to not talk at all and maintain complete mouth for a week or so depending on the severity of the case then after that we proceed with ensuring that the larynx of course is used but it's not overused that there's no vocal abuse of the larynx so we teach different different styles of talking like one of being the forward focus which helps in offloading the larynx now coming to fluency fluency is either a structural or collateral stammering as that we know it as we know as it has blocks, repetitions, prolongation, insertions, or with or without physical features. Physical features in the sense when I say it's like, you know, you can see these physical features happening. So there are a lot of individuals who have these physical features coming up. Certain times there are no physical features in the patient. And the individual just goes, kuk, kuk, kiren. Yes, that's from the Dan movie. So, uh, kuk, kiren, or they say, uh, 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 I, 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 I. So these kind of repetitions, these kind of blocks are usually present in fluency and we use fluency shaping techniques or stuffing modification techniques. So here you can see a stanzel because stuttering can happen even in pediatric population and in adult, pop adult population. So for adults, it's much more easier for to make them understand. In adults, it's uh, much more easier for them to uh, make them understand that this is how it works and this is how it works. But in pediatric population, we have to use pictures, use toys to make sure they understand how exactly the stuttering happens, make them understand what is actually happening in their system when they are talking because they need to understand so that they can overcome it. Now coming to resonance disorders. Uh, resonance disorders uh, basically means the speech is either nasal like it can be like nasal, very nasal or it can be let, uh, nasal, uh, hyponasal. This usually happens in individuals or the kids with cleft lip and palate because of the anatomical features, because of the barrier between the nose and the mouth being broken, they end up having a cleft and hence we have a uh, hyponasal or hyponasal speech. So post-surgical repair, of course, after surgical repair, we work on strengthening the muscles and achieving a normal voice. Now coming to articulation disorders. What are articulation disorders? Articulation disorders are when the child or an individual doesn't speak clearly and has and can say tela for kela or appa for an apple when certain sounds are substituted for a different sounds. So it can happen in adults and in kids. When it, uh, when it happens with kids, it's usually in developmental. And when it happens with adults, we usually call it dysarthria. So coming back to articulation disorders, the therapy includes teaching them 
correct articulatory posture of the sound to the child and drilling them.